Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our great podcasts at americastalking.com. We are recording this episode on Wednesday, May 3rd. And join me as always, my friend, my colleague, the guy that I look to for answers in the economy, Dr. Orfe Divangi. PhD economist. Dr. O, let's just jump right into it. You know, we are um, taping this prior to the Federal Reserve's release that is coming at 2 p.m. today. It is 7.37 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you for joining me so early. 9.37 a.m. here in uh, middle America. Tell me what you think. What's coming? I want to talk a little bit about the Office of Financial Research and this financial stress index. You and I kind of like we're trading some texts on it. But let's start with what, take it from the top. What is the Fed to look at or going to be focused on? We had, uh, so number one, inflation, inflation, inflation. Inflation has been coming down. Headline inflation has been coming down. We know that pretty rapidly, actually, in the month of uh, February and March. But core inflation, right, whether you look at the core CPI or the core PCE, core inflation is still somewhat sticky. It has not come down very much. In fact, in I think in March, it had kind of picked up a little bit, edged up a little bit. In April, it fell slightly, but it, you know, it, it, it's sticky. And I think that is what the Fed is going to be looking at. Core inflation basically two percentage points above the Fed's target means the Fed might have to tighten. Now, of course, there are a couple of things to consider, right? The, the, we, we were expecting that the bank sector turmoil would tighten financial conditions for the Fed so that we would see kind of this decline in hiring and uh, household consumption, but, you know, and, and, and moderating of wage growth. But wage growth is moderating, but we're not seeing, right? We're not seeing core de- decline very much. And in fact, we're not seeing financial conditions tighten all that much. I mean, they have tightened somewhat, but they they are actually looser. They were looser in April than they were in March. And so that's concerning. Now, of course, uh, you have the fact that wage growth is moderating is a positive. But I, you know, the market expects, I think, with a 90, I think 96% probability <laughs> that we will have a Fed, a, a rate hike. It's probably 100% now that we will have a, an increase in, in the key policy rate in, by 25 basis points today. Uh, and so that's, that's been, you know, the, the market's priced that in, right? We've seen, we saw, the stock sell off yesterday. We saw what happened to bond prices in the last couple of days. So, so yeah, that's expected. That's what the Fed's doing. Though now the big question is, should they hike more after that, or should they pause? Uh, that's a, that. I mean, that's a very difficult to, question to answer. Can we talk about that and pull that apart now? So, like, I mean, obviously, you don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. You're an economist. I'm a civilian. What do you think, Jerome Powell? is going to say today. What should people be listening for in his messaging around the rate hike that is an all but certainty? What should people be listening for from the from the chairman of the Federal Reserve today? It really depends on whether or not you believe the economy is slowing, right? I think the economy is slowing. I mean, we saw Q quarter one real GDP down to 1.1% from 2.6% in 2022, right? So 1.1%. And so like the economy is definitely slowing. How fast is it slowing? Another big question is, will inflation come down, right? And how, how much will inflation come down? Or, or how, how much negative do we have to get before inflation gets back to the 2% target? I think that is a, a concern. Now, there's some great research that came out a few days ago by Christina and David Romer. Christina Romer worked for the Obama administration at some point. Really, really talented economists. And they show basically, you know, they revisited some of their previous work on kind of the lags, the lagged impact of monetary policy. And they basically say, look, in response to a contractionary monetary policy policy shock, the unemployment rate rises gradually starting about five months after the shock. Uh, Look, the Fed has been raising rates for about a year now, right? And by five percentage points. So we've had a big increase in the Fed's funds rate in the last year, historic increase in the Fed funds rate in the last year, which really means that 
according to this work, a lot is coming. Definitely the unemployment rate is going to take up. We're starting to see layoffs ticking up a little bit. Real GDP starts to fall noticeably about two quarters after the contractionary shock. After nine quarters, it's 4.4% below where it would have otherwise been without the shock. And so, you know, we start to see the economy slowing. And then, of course, everything, you know, in the research, also what everybody's wanting to find out, wanting to know is when does inflation start to fall? Well, inflation falls below baseline about one year after the shock. We're starting to see that headline inflation is coming down. A contractionary monetary policy shock leads to a reduction in inflation by about 1.5 percentage points, permanent reduction in inflation by about 1.5 percentage points. That's straight from their research. So, you know, those are all expected. I think the Fed knows that. I think the U.S. economy is slowing. I think the Fed knows that perhaps it's done a lot and it needs to kind of wait and see what happens next before it, uh, you know, tries to apply the brake, more pressure on the brake again. And that's why I think a lot of people expect this to be the final rate hike. But we'll see. I'm going to chime in and I'm going to offer a little prognostication, too. And of course, this is long term. I'm thinking that we're going to see a, a, a 25 point bump today when it when it comes out. And I think that the Federal Reserve is going to wait in at least a quarter to do anything else beyond that. I mean, I would just be completely wagging at it. Well, my friend. Well, yeah, well, I mean, you know, Powell is going to want to keep his options open for sure. At some point in time, you have to let the decisions that you make play themselves out. And and I think that that there's been like if you look at and we're going to we're going to talk about this in the in, in you know in a, an episode that we're we're going to we're going to tape today. If you look at the historical pacing around Federal Reserve uh rate changes, we are swimming in waters that we have never encountered before. I mean in the in the history of US economics. So I don't want to spoil that because I want to talk about that with you in more detail. I'm just saying from a pragmatic standpoint, you kind of have to let this thing roll back away from the pressure of Congress and these crazy hearings where they're yelling at the people from the Federal Reserve that why didn't you do this and why didn't you do that after they themselves were the ones that washed all this stimulus money across the economy and have created this mess. Asking the Federal Reserve, demanding the Federal Reserve, pointing at the Federal Reserve to fix this thing. It's like a little kid that spills milk on the floor and starts to yell at its parent to fix it, <laughs> clean it up. I wouldn't point the finger squarely. And those are at my the, words, not Congress. yours. Yeah. I would point out though that they have tools. It doesn't seem that they know that they can legislate away a few things, and um, and so they also have tools, and they should use those tools to help the Fed and not fight it is the way I would put it. With that, we're going to call it to an end for Orfe Divangi. This has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com.